When exactly does Dragon Ball Super Superhero take place? It's a question I've seen a lot of people ask ever since the movie was first revealed last year, and even now, less than two weeks before the movie's Japanese release date, people are still confused on when it's supposed to take place. Is it before the Moro and Granola arcs? Is it after? Does the release of DBS Superhero mean that those two arcs are now non-canon and we won't see them be animated? Today, I'm wanting to answer all those questions and hopefully explain a few things for a few of you who might still be confused on where Superhero fits in the Dragon Ball timeline, and how the anime will work around the Moro and Granola arcs moving forward. I'm Innovative JDog, and if you haven't already, give this video a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to the channel for any and all things Dragon Ball. With that being said, let's get right into the video. So first and foremost, it's important to understand that we already know the date that Superhero takes place, and we know it because of Pan, who is confirmed to be three years old and going to kindergarten in the movie. As we all know, Pan was first referenced in the Battle of Gods movie, which takes place in Age 778, four years after the defeat of Majin Buu. In that movie, Videl was pregnant with her and Gohan's daughter, and we know that Videl's pregnancy was in its early stages because her belly hadn't grown and she wasn't showing any signs of pregnancy by that point. Then, roughly about a year later in age 779, Frieza gets revived in Resurrection F and we see that Pan has already been born. We then see Pan as a baby throughout the rest of the Dragon Ball Super story, before we see her again in Super Hero, where she's been aged up a few years and looks a bit closer to how she looked at the end of Dragon Ball Z. Now, it's heavily implied that because Pan is confirmed to be three years old in Super Hero, the movie takes place either towards the end of Age 782 or sometime in Age 783 before Pan has her fourth birthday. Either way, Super Hero brings us the closest we've ever been to the end of Z, which takes place in Age 784. Because of Pan's confirmed age, and because we know that she's four years old during the 28th Tenkaichi Budokai, we've been able to figure out that Superhero takes place roughly a year or so before the end of Z. But Pan isn't the only character that gave us these clues to figure this out. We've also seen an aged up Goten and Trunks who, for this movie in particular, look a lot older than what we've seen throughout the rest of Dragon Ball Super. However, they're still a little younger than what we see at the end of Z. And that's just about it when it comes to confirmed information about this movie's place in the timeline. We know for a fact that it takes place a few years after Dragon Ball Super Broly, and we know that it hasn't quite gotten past the end of Z yet because of Pan's exact age, and because of character designs. There's still time for characters to grow after the events of Superhero, and there's still time before Goku meets Oob at the 28th Tenkaichi Budokai. But that still begs the question, what about the Dragon Ball Super manga, particularly the stories that haven't been adapted into the anime yet? Dragon Ball Super Superhero has been cited by many sources as the official sequel to DBS Broly, and that the climactic final battle between Gogeta and Broly was the last battle that the Earth has seen. If that's the case, that doesn't make any sense because Moro and Granola both had to have happened before the end of Z, right? I mean, we see Baby Pan during the climax of the Moro arc alongside younger versions of Goten and Trunks, and Goku hasn't met Oob yet, and Granola takes place immediately after Moro, so what's the deal? Is Superhero wiping the slate clean and saying that those two arcs are now non-canon to the anime? Well, not entirely, but kinda, and let me explain why. It's entirely possible that these statements about Broly being the last big threat are just in context of the anime, and those statements are being aimed at us from a real-world perspective. But I believe it goes a bit deeper than that. Both the Moro and the Granola arcs haven't been animated yet, so it wouldn't make sense to talk about the events that haven't occurred on screen, because those characters simply don't exist, at least not in terms of the anime continuity. By now, the concept of Dragon Ball having multiple continuities shouldn't surprise anybody. The concept of things being canon or non-canon has always been a heated topic for discussion, but one thing is for certain, different Dragon Ball stories follow different forms of continuity. Dragon Ball Super in particular has two main different forms of continuity in both the anime and manga where similar events happen, but in different ways. Take for example the Goku Black and the Tournament of Power arcs, where they both happen in the anime and manga, but the stories aren't the exact same. In the anime, we don't see Goku Black transform into a Super Saiyan, nor do we see Goku ever use the Hakai technique against Merge Zamasu. We see those things happen in the manga, though. And when it comes to the Tournament of Power, Goku defeated Kefla in the anime, but Gohan was the one who fought her in the manga. 
It's moments like those that make the Dragon Ball Super manga impossible to have occurred in the same continuity as the Dragon Ball Super anime, but they are both proper continuations of the original Dragon Ball story. They're just their own separate continuities that tell similar stories in different ways. The Moro and Granola arcs are just more examples of the manga having a separate continuity from the anime, and it's possible that their existence is going to change up things even more than what we've been used to, and will impact the story structure of the anime moving forward. Up until now, the different Dragon Ball Super continuities have followed a similar structure in terms of where story arcs take place. In both the anime and manga, it's clear that the Universe 6 tournament takes place, and then the Goku Black Saga happens, followed by the Tournament of Power. After the Tournament of Power comes the DBS Broly movie, which also occurs in the Dragon Ball Super manga, but it happens off screen, or I guess off page. And then that's when we hit the fork in the road between the two continuities, where the story structure of Dragon Ball Super is going to change drastically. After Broly, it looks like the DBS anime is taking a bit of a time skip and will focus on the events of the superhero movie, whereas the manga, right as soon as the fight with Broly wrapped up, it moved on to Moro and then on to Granola after an uncertain amount of time. Now, it's been confirmed for a while that the Granola arc in the manga is going to end this year, and that a new story arc will begin immediately after it. We don't know what that new story arc is supposed to be about, but it's possible that Toyotaro will throw in another big splash page showing off the superhero movie, encouraging people to go and watch it. Or he'll do something along those lines to make superhero part of the manga continuity, just like what we saw with DBS Broly. But if Toyotaro does that, he's making superhero take place after the events of Moro and Granola, which makes sense in the context of the manga continuity. Piccolo being able to transform into his new potential unleashed state is something that we didn't see in the Moro arc, and depending on when it would take place, Pan and all those other characters could be aged up like what we saw in the new movie. It would be all fine and good in terms of the manga continuity, naturally progressing into a new story set after or before the end of Z. However, the idea of superhero taking place after Moro and Granola has scared a lot of Dragon Ball fans because they're thinking that the anime is going to wipe them clean and forget about them completely. Personally, I don't think that's the case though because like I said, the anime is a different continuity and with a few changes here and there, the Moro and Granola arcs could fit in perfectly after the superhero movie and could be the first few story arcs for whenever the anime decides to come back. Like I said before, the way the DBS manga tells its story is entirely different from how the anime tells its version of the same story. They both have their own ways of getting from point A, the start of the arc, to point B, the ending of the arc. If we take that logic and apply it to Moro, it's possible that we could see similar events take place where Goku and Vegeta take on Moro, go their separate ways to train, and then confront him back on planet Earth. But what makes the anime different from the manga is that we would see Gohan and Piccolo be stronger than what they were, thanks to superhero taking place before. We could then see things like Potential Unleashed Piccolo versus 7-3, and then we could see Piccolo and Gohan use their newfound strength to put more pressure on Moro before Goku and Vegeta show up. Then, at the end of the arc, we could see three-year-old Pan and the grown-up versions of Goten and Trunks at the celebration instead of their younger counterparts because they really don't have any impact on either version of the story. Then, of course, the Granola arc could take place after Superhero and Moro, and it could lead directly into the end of Z, where we see Goku meet Oob, and then potentially, the anime could adapt whatever comes next, making things come full circle. It's a lot of information to take in, I know, but I'm just trying to say that the anime still has potential to adapt both the Moro and Granola arcs after the superhero movie, even if the superhero story takes place after those two arcs in the manga. The anime versions of Moro and Granola aren't going to be the exact same as what we saw in the manga anyways, because the manga version of the story follows a different continuity and incorporates characters at different levels of power and at different points in time than what we see in the anime. To sum things up as simple as I can, the manga storyline would start off with an off-screen version of Broly, then move into Moro, then into Granola, and then the superhero movie could take place off-screen before a new arc begins. As for the anime, it would start with the Broly movie, move into superhero, then the anime versions of Moro and Granola, before moving on to something new. Regardless, all we know is that Superhero is set after Broly, and is supposed to take place roughly a year before the end of Z, and that is a certified fact. As for where it takes place in relation to the Moro and Granola arcs, it makes the most sense to me for the anime to come back after the release of Superhero, and then have those two stories be adapted where Goku meets Oob, but it's entirely possible that Toei could throw us a curveball and do something entirely different. We'll just have to wait and see. 
So with that all in mind, what are your thoughts on the two separate continuities for Dragon Ball Super? With Pan's age and other character designs confirming that we're getting closer to the end of Z, how do you feel about the anime adapting different versions of the Moro and Granola arcs after the movie? Leave your thoughts down below and let's have a discussion. I would love to hear all your thoughts, so please comment and while you're at it, go ahead and smash that thumbs up button to help push this video into YouTube's algorithm. The more likes this video has, the more likely it is that other Dragon Ball fans will also see this video. Plus, it gives me an idea of how much you enjoyed today's content. While you're at it, click that subscribe button and turn on post notifications by clicking that bell icon. That way, you'll be able to see whenever I upload a new video. If you're a fan of all things Dragon Ball, you'll definitely want to stick around because I make a ton of content, ranging from reviews, discussions, speculation videos, and so much more. As always though, thank you all so much for watching today's video, I hope you enjoyed. Until next time though, I will be seeing all of you Dragon Ball fans later. See ya!